This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday. It is January 6th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with the guy who always sits at the cool kids' table, Jerem Jordan. I wish. Uh, BYU Sports Nation put out the following, which table he's sitting at. Uh, a has Michaela Coolhand, Spencer Lynch, and Jimmer Fredette, Jamal Williams. That's pretty good. B has me, Zach Wilson, Caleb Loner, Shaley Gonzalez. C okay. has Greg Rubel, Mark Pope, Cameron Tucker, Samson Nakua. And D, which I think is the overwhelming winner here, has Steve Young, Kalani Sitake, Kiki Solano, and Paisley Johnson. If you couldn't sit at your table, where are you sitting, Spence? I'm probably sitting with Samson Nakua and Mark Pope. That feels like it'd be the craziest. Yes. I need some crazy in my life. Yes, there'd be some good TikToks coming out of that one with Cam Tucker. <laughs> Cam Tucker can talk about how awesome she is and all the goals that she scored. Samson Deku and Mark Pope can yeah. uh, go back and forth in whatever crazy way they would. People want to hang out with Steve Young. People do that, want to that, hang out with Steve Young. That's why D is probably the winner. Jimmer and Jamal and Michaela and you, pretty awesome. Jamal alone almost seals the deal. Right, Jamal's fun. I think my table is super underrated here. I oh. think Shaley's a great hang. Caleb is like the best hang. Zach is Zach. It's like, how's the NFL, man? What's going on? Yeah, you want to talk about like any, any NFL life as like, a rookie, the number two overall any, pick? Any food, time, place, right? He's got a headband on probably or something. <laughs> and then there's me, the loser with those guys. Yeah, that, that, that's fun. Hey, we've got a cool kids lineup on this Thursday show, including Cam Meller, college football analyst, NFL draft, senior director for Pro Football Network 365. Why he thinks not just Zach Wilson, and he was right, is a clear NFL talent, but the next guy in line, Jaron Hall, is potentially a first round talent. Plus, game night for BYU basketball, finally. We hope the game tips off against Pacific. Our double-down picks for the Cougars and Tigers. And the head coach of BYU Gymnastics guard, Young, previews the season and the best of Utah meet tomorrow night. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Big day for BYU football as the Cougars announced the transfer of two running backs yesterday, Christopher Brooks from Cal and Houston Haymooley from Stanford. Also, Gunnar Romney announces he is returning. And receiver Chris Jackson entered the transfer portal. Much more on the additions coming up in what's trending. BYU basketball game day, as mentioned, against Pacific. The only West Coast Conference men's game to be played to this point of the season for all teams involved in the WCC. The conference tip-off, if you will. BYU 12-3 overall, undefeated at home, 6-0. Pacific just 5-9. This is not a great game for the metrics, but I can guarantee you BYU is just happy to play a game before the hopeful warm-up as they take on St. Mary's this Saturday. Coverage tonight, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio, 8.30 Eastern on BYU TV with countdown to tip-off. 18th ranked women's hoops begins WCC play as well at San Francisco, 9 Eastern on the WCC Network. Cougars 10-1, and one, ranked for a sixth straight week, a first since 2006. What's up, Danny Kubik? Sixth ranked BYU men's volleyball begins the season tonight against fifth ranked Penn State. Cougars 20-4 and four a season ago. Eighth and NPSF conference title and a trip to the national championship where they eventually lost to Hawaii. So some things, some lofty ambitions for this team, though. This is a new look squad for sure. Penn State returns its entire starting lineup. This is a great challenge for BYU to open the season against Penn State. EIVA champs. Yeah, you can watch it on Big Ten Plus. Men's tennis begins the season at the Hawaii Invitational for the next three days. Man, that's a rough road trip. It's the first of 15 non-conference matches. Jake Toulson oversees 10 points, three rebounds, three assists in a three-point loss for BC Gittingen. A lot of Cougars doing work in the European uh, circuit. Nine. The basketball (laughs) area of the world. All eyes and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Run it back. Gunnar Romney coming back for BYU football. He is joining a couple of notable Portal tra- or transfer portal guys and Christopher Brooks from Cal and Houston Haymuli from Stanford. Uh, this makes the Tyler Algier exit feel a little bit better. Not great, but a little bit better. Jerem, with those three guys, as you look at Gunner's tweet saying, hey, 
Time to run it back. With those three guys back in the mix, do you expect the BYU offense, Jaron Hall-led, to be as productive or gulp maybe even better than last season? I'm not sure it can be more productive. Look, look at some of the numbers, okay? Uh, points per game, 28th. That was really good. Uh, yards per carry, 24th. Yards per play, 8th in the country. That's a big one. You don't want to do just total offense because there's different tempos, right? Um, it, you know, 40-plus plays, 7th in the country, 23. Super explosive, right? A lot of those were Tyler Algier runs. They weren't just Puka Nakua downfield. BYU had a tremendous season, 21st in total touchdowns, 57. And the teams ahead of BYU, a lot of them played a 14th game in a conference championship game and or the playoff or whatever. It's going to be tough to increase um, the the wins, the points, the yards, because you're losing the greatest single season of rushing BYU has ever seen. You think about all the great running backs. That was it. Yet, I do think that Jaron Hall can take a step forward in terms of hopefully being healthy for the whole year. I think he can throw more than 20 touchdown passes. I think he can get into the 30 range. He only had five picks. Like, his efficiency at, what, 156 was really good. He'd probably run for more if he wanted to as well. Maybe. Um, if he doesn't run, maybe that's key to staying healthy. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but he's too good at it to think, eh, you don't just eliminate it. Is there a way to be smarter with it? I don't know. But, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure that BYU can be better than that. Can BYU approximate that and play? Like, BYU's offense doesn't have to explode against Notre Dame and Oregon and Arkansas and Baylor. They need to just win the day. Like, the defense needs to be opportunistic, get some turnovers. BYU needs to be able to run the ball, convert on third down, make some field goals, and then win. I don't really care how BYU wins in those. Um, in these other games, sure, I want BYU's offense to show up faster. And, and this was – Okay, A-Rod, you are the OC. Publicly, we're saying it. Jaron Hall, you're the quarterback. So year two, you would think there is a t- step forward. I'm just saying in terms of the rushing game, like overall, it's going to be hard to replicate that. How do you quantify a more productive offense? What's at the top of the list? Points? Points. That's Yeah, points. Right? Yeah. So BYU 33. I mean, overall, number 17 total offense in the country. That's going to be hard to beat. And against, I mean, you, you played, you know, the Pac-12 is down, but BYU played 7 power 5. Yes. Uh, against Notre Dame, BYU's not putting up 33. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to have to win a game where the defense gives up 17 or 23 or something. Okay, so BYU opens the season at USF. That's a game where BYU could put up 40-plus. Jaron Hall is licking his chops thinking about that one from 2019. Absolutely. He wants the vengeance tour after his initial start in 2019 that you just referenced. Yeah, he wants to, one, finish the game, and two, he wants to win the game, and three, probably wants to go crazy for 40-plus points. But then come the Baylor Bears and Oregon Ducks. Like, I look at the overall balance of next year's schedule, and I think, man, can BYU average more than 33 points a game against that schedule? It's going to be hard. Notre Dame, Arkansas, at Boise State. BYU will have some big scoring games. Wyoming's a tough defense, too. Utah State's obviously a better team under Blake Anderson, their head coach. Liberty is not an easy out. Uh, So I see, like, maybe three games where BYU could just for sure go crazy. East Carolina and Provo, Dixie State season finale in Provo, and at USF. Outside of that, it's like, uh, what? I feel like it's good to hope for the 24 rule that Bronco Mendenhall instituted more than a decade ago. Score more than 24, hold your opponent under 24, you win games. Like, I would be okay with that. So I do not expect BYU to average more points per game because not all schedules are created equally. I think that this schedule with the balance and the high-tier Power 5 teams are going to prevent BYU from scoring more than 33 points a game. And that's okay. When Luke Staley left, was BYU like, yeah, we're going to have more points per game? No. You know what I mean? Yeah, you lose Tyler out. Yeah, you bring back Jaron Hall and an amazing offensive line and tons of pass-catching weapons. But the balance of the schedule... Ten games in a row with no bye week. By the way, I mean, I can imagine how difficult that was for Tom Homo, the athletic director. You get into the Big 12, you're trying to cancel, you know, like 80 games over the next five seasons. You don't have to cancel anything with next year, though. Well, like, this isn't something that he wanted, obviously, ten games in a row. Like, what person in the right mind would want East, that? ECU could only do that. Yeah, week. yeah. So that that's tough, but... To me, those are two different things. Sure, sure. I get sidetracked here, but I look at the overall balance of the schedule and just the quality of those high-level power five and high-level like group of five Baylor, opponents. Baylor got good. Baylor's Notre Dame won the Sugar Bowl. Notre Dame, Notre Dame, you finally had a chance to add it, so you add it. You don't say no, right? 
you add it. It's Notre Dame. It's Vegas. Like the the experience that everybody had in Cougar Nation at Allegiant Stadium was unbelievable. Like you add that game. So and ECU had to do that. So the you know those combination of things make it okay. It just is what it is. You got to go in there. Listen, be- I'm telling you, you're two under Aaron Roderick. It's going to be good. Uh, will it be better than 33 points a game? It doesn't have to be for BYU to be successful. Buddy. No, you don't have to score more than 33 a game to win nine or ten games. BYU's defense has got to be better. I think if the offense approximates what it was, again, you're not going to have a Tyler Algier-type run game. Tyler Algier won the Utah State game and the Washington State game by himself. Like, sorry, with the O-line. I know, I know. But, like, individual. His effort was monumental. Yes, showing it, like, KVN, fourth quarter, San Diego State, 2012-point Seti Bowl-like efforts. Tyler Algier was worth two or three games, you know, by himself to BYU, like we talked about. So, he's just running over fools. So well, BYU fun. scored 66 against Virginia, too. Let's not forget that that factored into their 33 points a game. Right, because then when you go for, you know, 13 another week or whatever, that offsets it, right, a little bit. So, no, it's not going to be as good as it was in terms of total points, I think, due to Tyler Algier. But the better offensive line, year two under Jaron Hall and, and, and uh, Aaron Roderick, Puka Nakua should have a 1,000-yard season. Gunnar Romney has 1,000-yard receiver potential. Chase Roberts is coming on. Can we see Cody Epps at some point? Keanu Hill's growing. Like, it's going to be fun to have Blake Freeland and Kingsley Suamata'ia and Harris Lachance yes. and Clark Barrington and Connor Pay and Joe Tukoff. And like, it's, it's going to be awesome. I don't have offensive questions that much. Like, we're asking an offensive question. Def- the defense has got to be better. A lot of that was due to injuries. And hopefully the D-line, some of which are in school, Logan Fano, Isaiah Moa and stuff, that these freshmen can have an impact, perhaps as backups to some of the vets. But that finally, in year, what, seven, under Klein Stockey, that we see that D-line go, BYU's getting pressure with four sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think BYU's offense could help out the defense a little bit too and be more ball control heavy if they want to because of the offensive line that they bring back. If you can with Tyler Algier. BYU could be a little bit more methodical, but the problem with Tyler, and I hesitate to call it a problem, is they score too fast. There's no such thing to me. Holy cow. Just score. Big play offense all the time. It, It was unbelievable how fast and how many big plays BYU used to score. In no way, shape, or form will I ever complain about scoring too fast. I'm not complaining. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, not saying you are. I'm not complaining. Big that, 12 does ball. Put, that does put the defense on the field more. Fine. You scored. If you give up a field goal, great. You're plus four there. Big 12 ball is scoring fast, by the way. They play that style. BYU, with the personnel that they bring back, could go more ball control heavy if they want to. I don't know that that's Aaron Roderick's style. Just score a bunch, score fast, defense figure it out. Defense needs to be better. Defense will be healthier, which will obviously help Hopefully. the defense be better because they were the walking wounded going into the end of the season at USC and then against UAB in the bowl game. It was crazy how many people were not available, specifically on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and I wonder, and, and BYU has always been more of a Big Ten type team than a Big 12 type team. Like, BYU is not a spread the field speed type uh, personnel. No, that's the ball control. So comment. maybe, maybe in the Big 12, and uh, let's go back to what Ty Detmer was trying to do when he was here. Ty Detmer wanted BYU to be another Stanford. Hey, what what is our competitive advantage? We can get great alignment. We can get good running backs. We have tremendous, you know, receivers and quarterbacks. Two tight ends that can, can BYU block do that. capable. Like, like this year, how many times are we going to see two fullbacks with Mason Wake and Houston Haymooley in third and one? You know what I mean? It feels like that could be a great possibility. Is BYU in the Big 12 going to say, you know what? We're not going to try and, and do what everyone else is doing. We're, we're going to be uh, explosive and all these things BYU was. But physical. if we want to be physical and run the ball and control the game, then we will. Because Aaron Roderick showed that he can gear down. There were a bunch of times where BYU was not in fifth gear in an isom tri- drive at the end of games. Washington State. It felt like three or four weeks in a row it was like that, right? Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, State, Washington State. Utah State, much of the second half was sort of that idea, right, to just limit what Jacob Conover had to do. He didn't have to do anything. Hand the ball off to Tyler Algier. Maybe that's the direction BYU goes. I'm not saying they're not going to be explosive. I'm just saying sometimes you control the pace of the game by saying, nope, we're going to slow it down right here, and we're going to still go get a touchdown. Guess what? BYU can average 30 points a game or 31 points a game next season and still have it be amazing. 
It's okay if BYU doesn't score 33 a game. I'd take nine right now against that schedule. They're capable. Take nine wins. We'll see. Just the, the balance of that schedule is really, really tough. There are fewer power uh, Pac-12, so BYU's got to show up now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Our question of the day. They were too easy. Do you expect the BYU offense to be as productive or maybe even better than last season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Jalen Miyasaki on Instagram answers, offense was never the issue, but I do expect the offense to be better than 2021. Mm. Again, does that mean more points, more total yards? That's a lot to ask. Total yards is not a metric that matters. Like yards per play, yards per attempt in the pass game, those are easier to He quantify. continues, BYU needs their defense healthy. If the defense can stay healthy, 10-plus wins again isn't out of the question. It's not. Um, you're going to have to upset a couple teams. Like I think Baylor at home, BYU will be a dog. I think BYU will be a dog to Notre Dame, of course. Arkansas will be interesting. We'll see Who knows what Oregon brings back. That Right or- now that feels like a – coin flip game. BYU should be a dog. That'll be perceived. Probably, not, probably like a three-point underdog. BYU should be a dog in Eugene. But when you win 10-plus games and you return your quarterback, and they've people got a new, love They've you. got a new coach. People love They're you. They're trying to figure yeah. some things out. They'll be better on defense because they got George's D.C. What's his name? Dan Fleming or something? Yeah, he Lemming, I think. Uh, that Yeah. Oregon's always good. It's just how good. They were good this year. They just weren't great. Like we thought they were. <laughs> they were broken at the end of the season. Absolutely. Like they, yeah. How do you win at Ohio State but get blown out <laughs> twice? You like I don't. Well, then again, like you could argue, how do you uh, beat Utah and Arizona State and lose to UAB? UAB? Absolutely. Like, like, injuries. 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 Yeah. It's a, a game, a literal game changer. Yeah. All right. Send in your responses. Hashtag BYUSN. Coming up, why BYU football is putting out a casting call for big trucks right now. And maybe Cam Miller thinks so highly of Jaron Hall that. He thinks the offense is going to be better next year. Why is he a potential first-round NFL talent as well? Whoa, this is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's my style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style checking account today. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Ruby is an spontaneous optimist who doesn't give up. Describe Ruby in five words. She's always a team player. Deep as an ocean. Hopeful, inspirational, fun. Inquisitive and determined. Describe Ruby in one word, caring. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The first game for anybody in men's basketball West Coast Conference play is tonight. BYU hosting Pacific. BYU TV's coverage begins on countdown to tip off at 8.30 Eastern as Tyler, Dave, Blaine, Spencer, and I get ready for the game. You might as well call it the countdown to conference tip off because that's what it has countdown become. Countdown to the conference 
tonight. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan, who is always ready for engaging convo at the cool kids table, and it always helps when you have a pro football analyst at your table. Yeah, Cam Miller is one of the uh, more engaging uh, interviews we have on the show, and he, he called it a couple years ago about Zach Wilson. Um, and here's my conversation from this morning about Zach Wilson and Tyler Algier and Jaron Hall. Cam, you've got tremendous street cred on this program because you called Zach Wilson being very good to great first. And now you're talking about Jaron Hall in your latest article uh, about quarterbacks going into the 2023 draft, not this next one, but the one after that. And you're saying Jaron Hall has first round potential. Tell us again what you see. It's simple. Uh, There's there's things that you cannot coach. And Jaron Hall has him. It's like Zach had the accuracy, the poise, the arm talent, and the touch. Jaron's got that all, but he's also got a little bit extra with his legs. I mean, Zach was incredibly athletic, obviously, but Jaron's got all the platforms you want to throw from, and he's got all of the other elite intangibles that a quarterback has, but he's got him in spades. And so as long as he can stay healthy and stay consistent, he's got the schedule this coming year to prove that he can do it against top flight talent, but he's also got the ability to elevate the talent with him too. So he's got a prime situation to not only prove he has the skills, but also elevate himself even higher in the first round if all goes well. Were you surprised at his season this year? Because I think we thought, okay, he has a chance to be good, but he was very good. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I, I'm on record as ranking him and Baylor in the pre- and Baylor Romney as in the preseason as what, I think it was 88th best on my quarterback rankings. So I was skeptical at best. You know, you saw flashes, but this year, I mean, consistently after returning to the lineup, uh, what's one thing I, I love to look for in quarterbacks is linear growth. And so if you see it, once he got healthy and once he got back and you see, I know Baylor, they lose the game down in Waco, but that game, he, he gave them fits. He was throwing amazing throws, accurate touch, poise, anticipatory throws to the sidelines, NFL throws, which is what I call those two deep downfield outbreaking throws. Jaron's got him. He's got all the throws in his arsenal. And I, uh, I was consistently and pleasantly surprised down the stretch with how he played. I agree on you with the health part. He's certainly got to show that he can, you know, last most, if not all of a season. He played 10 of the 13 games and missed a couple with the ribs, of course, and then had a foot injury uh, where he missed the bowl game. That certainly played into the result that BYU got in that, sort of the feeling we have here of like, ah, that didn't end all that great. But if Jaron can show he's healthy, um, day one feels like it'd be incredible. If he's day two, that's still amazing. If he's drafted at all, I think that's probably even a surprise. But you feel like there is a shot at first round for Jaron Hall. Yes, there is. Because if you look at it, there's question marks after the top two quarterbacks. You know, there's a Spencer Rattler who's got all the elite intangibles, but who knows what he looks like. Is he the guy that we saw at the start of the season in Oklahoma, but now with South Carolina? Or does Shane Beamer revitalize him? I think he still has a chance to be the third best quarterback or QB three in the draft class. It all obviously all starts with Bryce Young and CJ Stroud probably going one and two. If if that class were to be drafted this year, they would be one and two. They're that good. So it's a, it's a hard road, a tough road, but law of averages states, so you're going to have more than three quarterbacks likely drafted next first round because there's not going to be a whole lot this year. And so with the draft class being not as great or top heavy this year, it's going to help and propel a lot of teams that are going to be QB needy in the 2023 offseason. So I think if he can maintain the health and prove sort of what we've seen this year is what his ceiling or his floor is, so to speak, and the ceiling is higher, absolutely he can get in the first round conversation. And he'll certainly have opportunities to prove himself against tougher competition, fewer power fives, but tougher this coming fall. We're talking to Cam Miller of Pro Football Network. Tyler Algier broke out for the greatest rushing season BYU has ever seen. Now he's going to the NFL draft. Where do you see him in the draft? Day two, early. Honestly, there's the conversation of there's the top three running backs. I know everybody wanted to say Brees Hall and Isaiah Spiller were the untouchable, bulletproof one and two. But honestly, I think Kenneth Walker is probably the best of those three. And so Kenneth Walker, Brees Hall, Isaiah Spiller. And then there's not as sizable of a gap that I think people are are proclaiming between him and the next tier, those three in the next tier between I think Tyler Algier is probably the fourth best running back. If you look at it, what separates running backs from being good right away, and you have to be good right away, let's face it, with how short the shelf life is for an NFL running back, you have to be good right away. Tyler Algier is essentially Javante Williams of the Broncos. They're the same make and mold. They're the same build. They bounce off contact. They have great contact balance, and they break their arm tackles with ease. Honestly, I think Tyler Algier is NFL ready, and so that's going to help him 
get to the next level, get drafted early, but then also once an NFL scout or GM interviews him, they're going to fall in love with him. And that's all it's going to take because he's just as good of a man as he is on the field, off the field. He is a great dude and one of the great success stories of BYU, a walk-on who played some linebacker, came back to running back, and now he's hopefully a day-two guy. I like, uh, I like early second round. I think that'd be tremendous. First round running back. I mean, you got to be uh, an incredible talent to squeeze there. Yep. Okay, let's talk about who BYU grabbed to perhaps replace him. Tough to say, hey, yeah, can you get 1,600 yards and 23 touchdowns? Uh, Christopher Brooks from Cal. What do you see in his game that – isn't comparable per se to Tyler Algier, but like, who is he? He's a bigger Tyler Algier with less speed. So I think he he's a great complimentary back. You're going to have to have somebody else that goes alongside Christopher Brooks. I don't think he's proven in his career at Cal that he can handle the load, be the bell cow for lack of a better term. So I think he's going to need some help. He's going to need a, sort of a, an elusive shifty guy, maybe a guy out of the backfield as well who in pass catching because Christopher Brooks is not really that guy. He's a big dude who, again, he bounces off of contact and arm, ta arm tackles. But I mean, there, there's not a whole lot more than one cut, get up field type of, uh, type of back that he is. And so he's going to need a complimentary back to sort of replicate any sort of success that Algier had. But he's, he's a great start to, to replacing that 1,600-yard season. So Tyler Algier going to be drafted somewhere. Are there any other Cougars you see potentially being drafted? Uh, James Enpy, because, I mean, what, was it 2019? He entered the year, and he was possibly the best center prospect. And so I know injuries has affected his entire career, but he's still with the the lack of maybe top tight, top tier centers in this draft class. Enpy will definitely get a look. It's probably day three. It's later rounds of day three. Uh, and then besides James Enpy, it's Keenan Peely. Peely, the lack, again, of interior linebackers is what's going to get him drafted. You have Nicobe Dean from Georgia and Devin Lloyd, who is all world, all everything. They're going to go first round. But after that, it sort of drops off a cliff in terms of interior linebackers. So you got a guy who his age is going to be a deterrent for some teams, but he can plug and play right away as a, as a coverage linebacker at the next level. You mentioned Keenan Peely, who will come off an ACL and play this, this uh, fall with the team. Is there anyone else coming uh, you know, with BYU currently that in the 23 draft, besides Jaron Hall, you see his NFL draft potential? Peyton Mulgar. So both linebackers, excuse me. Yeah, you're still right. Love both Peyton. linebackers coming back. So it's we're, I'm still on Peyton. I mean, it, let's face it. This is a guy who, don't tell Kirk Herbstreit, but he loves football. <laughs> and he loves playing the game. So Peyton Mulgar loves playing the game so much that he has the sour taste in his mouth. I talked to Peyton a couple of weeks ago, and he had sour taste in his mouth, did not want to end his career that way. So the fact that him and Peely are coming back, it's Wilgar. I didn't think I needed to mention him because obviously he's, he's he's on the mantle once he does get drafted as uh, one of the <laughs> ones I called early on in his career. So he's uh, he's up there, but both linebackers get drafted, MP this year, uh, Peely and Wilgar next year. Yeah, I think part of the – I mean, you go into the bowl game and it's like you're looking around, you're like, who are you? Like there are name tags, you know, on the jerseys. Like, what's your name? Uh, but, you know, unfortunately it ended uh, the way it did. But – a healthy BYU was ranked as high as 10th last year, so we'll see what BYU can do this fall. Let's talk about Zach Wilson. He's really turned a corner with the Jets. The Jets stink. I don't actually feel like the Jets are going to be good to great one day, but maybe, you know, the last couple of weeks they've shown they're playing better, they're figuring some things out. What have you seen from Zach Wilson that continues to validate what you said a couple years ago? It it's the timing of the offense. He needs to have good timing on the offense. If you look at it, what, what marked his career in the, the, the moment in time in which we all of a sudden everybody started seeing it is that he got confident. And the, what drew his confidence was the fact that they were running the timing offense. Everything was on schedule. It was on par. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three balls out receivers, catching it, making plays for him. When that happens, we saw it against the bucks, the defending super bowl champions for two and a half quarters the timing was was on, and so was his confidence, and his confidence grew with every single throw. So I think they're, they're a few players short of being a good team. Uh, right now, I don't think they need to address the quarterback position for a long time, though, because of that. So build around Zach, continue to build around players who can increase the timing and the in overall play from the defense side of the ball because they need help on defense. Getting Carl Lawson back next year will certainly help since he didn't get to play a snap for him this year. Uh, but get him some playmakers, too, on the outside, not just Braxton Berrios. Absolutely. Berrios, the greatest flag football player of all time, turned NFL, right? Uh, he just has fun when he's out there. I and know no. that you saw the which table are you sitting at post the BYU Sports Nation put at. So am I to assume that table B with Zach Wilson and myself is where you're going to sit? Absolutely. And it's not just because <laughs> of Zach Wilson. It's No, it's all because of Zach. You just happen to be there. <laughs> Absolutely. It's you, it's you and Zach, but also don't tell Spence. 
<laughs> it's it's funny. Like no one, my wife said, no one's saying table B, and I said, you know what? That's thank you for that. I appreciate it. Me and Cam Miller will hang out. Cam, we appreciate the time. I, Always. I think, I think recency bias. Recency bias probably had you there. People are like, oh, I talked to Zach maybe last. You know, I, I, I've heard <laughs> Zach talk enough. I want to go sit with Steve Young. I haven't heard and sit with sat with him a long time. So. No, absolutely. Table B. Yeah, table B for the win. Let's go. Cam, we appreciate the time. Always insightful, as I mentioned, and we'll talk soon. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me, as always. Well, sorry, Spence. Uh, he chose, oh, it's all good. Chose B. I get it. But but good. He loves Zach Wilson. But it, and I want to point this out, too. Jake Heaps said a first-round talent after his freshman year. Andre Ware, during the season, was also saying that. So Cam Miller is one of three dudes who saw Zach his freshman year and said, there's something really, really special there, which was pretty insightful. You got to give them credit, and that's why we're shouting out their names. Discover. They're in the credit game, and so are we, apparently. But he's early on the Jaron Hall thing, and obviously <laughs> he's aware of Jaron's right. injury past, right. but says, hey, if he can maintain health, and he brings up a great point. There are a bunch of quarterbacks that are going to go out in the 2023 draft, and not a ton are going out this year. So by nature, teams are just going to be looking for more quarterbacks next year. And the average is like three and a half quarterbacks taken in the first round. Four. Next year, there will probably be five taken in the first round. There's 11 total in the draft the last five years. So like he's, per draft. 11 he's saying total. that he thinks that Jaron Hall has a legitimate chance to be a top five quarterback going into the 2023 draft. That's quite the statement. It really is. We thought he was a little crazy about the Zach Wilson thing, so maybe we should uh, <laughs> I, trust what he says about Jaron Hall. I think it's a little crazy in a great way. Like, that, the ceiling is that high for Jaron is pretty exciting. Absolutely. Therefore, BYU will have a better offensive year. In there. <laughs> okay, coming up. If they do, that helps the stock. Then he's gone, yep. right? Because technically he's a junior. Man. Coming up, we talk hits and sticks with silver medalist and BYU gymnastics coach Guard Young. Plus, has BYU taken over control of sports in general in the state of Utah? Oh, shoot. This is BYU Sports Station. This is where we dominate. Our playground. Place of business. This is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at trioorum.com. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Dally Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Dally. I watch uh, BYG TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Listen as BYU hosts Pacific to open a West Coast Conference play tonight. BYU in uh, men's hoops. Google pregame live begins at 8 Eastern with Jason Shepard, Greg Bell, and Mark Duran have the call at 9 Eastern on BYU Radio and the app. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is BYU Sports Station on a Thursday. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on all of the major social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. You know what time it is. Let's whip it. 
The Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Jerem, start us off. What's the ceiling for Gunnar Romney next year? 800 plus yards, eight touchdowns receiving. He's the big play receiver that BYU needed and wanted and got back for one more go with Jaron Hall. I think they will target Gunnar Romney down the field more along with Puka Nakua. They're going to be the two big play receivers. The ceiling is 100, 1,015. Like, he could do way up there if he wanted. I think with Puka, if those can, guys can combine for a massive number, but that's a really nice one-two punch. A thousand yard season for Gunnar Romney? Why not? Well, I didn't say what I think is going to happen or the average. We said the ceiling. The ceiling. Where's the ceiling? The ceiling's way up for him. If yeah. he's healthy the whole year, he, he had key. almost 810 games two years ago. That's that's the key. He would have had a 1,000 years. Can he stay healthy? Season. We hope so. Yeah. BYU football national champion running back Lockheed Himuli was featured in one of the best posters I can remember. The Turbo Tongan with a huge truck behind him. Now his son Houston is playing fullback for BYU with another Hamuli in the backfield. Will we see an updated version of this poster this year? I think we need to, and there are all elements there. Clothing included, the uh, you know the crew socks, and the, the big <laughs> truck. Yes, I would love this. The old school jersey, loose sleeves. Let's make it happen, Houston. We know well, Lockheed's son, Hema, who's a producer here, so... Even if BYU doesn't do, do it, they can yeah. just do it. Yeah, yes, Hamlin's totally it. capable of just doing it. I think it should be a poster in the program at the game. I love that Houston said, this is my motivation. Yeah, it's great. Fantastic. On a podcast with Jimmy Rex, Britton Covey said the reason he chose Utah over BYU was the Cougar coaches told him they thought he was too small, but he proved them wrong when they gave him a scholarship offer. Did BYU blow it with Britton Covey? No, I just think Utah out-recruited BYU. I don't think BYU blew it. I think that... Unfortunately, the Cougars and their staff said something that Britton didn't like, didn't resonate with him. But he also said Utah was the first team to contact me, and they never said anything about this. So even if BYU doesn't say that, I think he's still going to Utah because of the whole loyalty fact. Like, they were the first. I don't, based on that interview. And BYU absolutely blew it because he wanted to be at BYU. So all you have to do is cater to him and get him in. Like, if he wants to be here and he's good and you didn't get him, it's your fault. Yeah, touche. Joey blew it. I don't know that they blew it or if Utah just did a better job. Did Utah just out recruit Then BYU, BYU blew it. I, that's if not... Utah did a better job and he wanted to be here, you blew it. I don't think you blew it. Like that's What just, didn't it's... BYU blow there? Well, they got out recruited. That's like just because that's you lose it. just because you lose to a team doesn't mean you blow a game, right? You didn't blow it. Right, but what if lost. what if you're up 28 then? Why were then they you, up 28? Because he wanted to be here. That's not, that's not necessarily. Like, he said he wanted to be here as a little kid. When did that change in high school, though? Like, you're, you're little until you're 18. <laughs> agree to disagree. But, like, yeah. touche. Like, they if they didn't BYU go as aggressively up, as Utah. BYU was up 21 or 28 on him. You know what else? Utah blew it on Zach Wilson. They blew it on Zach Wilson? No. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. They didn't even recruit him. Now that's different. They didn't even recruit him. BYU offered Britain a scholarship. Both. Utah blew it. BYU just got out recruited. <laughs> BYU blew it. And Utah blew it too. BYU Zach. alum and jazz owner Ryan Smith was part of an ownership group that bought the MLS team Real Salt Lake yesterday. Had the Cougars taken over sports in the state of Utah with Ryan Smith. Uh, yes. And most notably, uh, you know, it's the jazz. It's Real Salt Lake. Danny Ainge is the CEO and alternative governor. Why not throw him? And then, of course, Kyle Whittingham, former Cougar, is up with Utah. <laughs> we threw that one in there because that's what we do here. In his BYU uniform, of course. Yes. BYU's taking over the state of Utah in sports. Let's go, man. It's fantastic. All we need is the bees now. <laughs> we just need a BYU baseball player or Mike Littlewood to become the manager of the bees? We don't want Mike to leave BYU, though. No. No. He, he wouldn't even leave for the uh, you know NBA to ref. Which is crazy. Coming up, the reverse 17-point pick in the double day. Ooh. BYU gymnastics coach Guard Young will join us as well on the eve of his team season opener. The best of Utah meet. This is BYU Sports Nation. Best of Utah. So all BYU people.
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Every day, I help an animal walk again. Boots was born with two very special front paws. To have the chance to save those beings that can't help themselves. When Tail was eight weeks old, he was ran over by a car. To give hope to hopelessness. Good. We're worried about Colby's future if he doesn't get help. They need help. They need help. If I can improve their life even just a little bit, I have to try. Every person and every animal should have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. They give so much, and just to give back a little bit means so much to me. It almost feels like a miracle that somebody could give them a whole new lease on life. To have that many loving hearts come together at one time to help these animals is a stunning thing to witness. <laughs> <laughs> there are just no words. It goes uh, beyond us, doesn't it? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Gymnastics starts its season tomorrow with the best of Utah. Me and watch the Cougars face Utah, Utah State, Southern Utah in West Valley, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live from Studio B. And while we're talking about gymnastics, let's welcome in the head coach of BYU Gymnastics, Guard Young, silver medalist in the Olympics. We always need to throw that in. Former broadcast student at BYU. So he's going to tell us how to do our jobs once this interview ends. Guard, I can't believe we're back for another season. And uh, Jeremy just said the four teams that are involved. The state of Utah gymnastics, all four of these programs coming back were top 25 teams a season ago. What do you expect from these four this go around? Yeah, I think, you know, it's such a fun event to kick off the gymnastics season. Um, you know, we get a whole semester with our students. It's like we're watching these great teams go out there and kill it. And then it's just like, all right, come on, when's our turn? So it's finally our turn. Um, the, the fans of gymnastics in the state of Utah, you know, they don't know how good it is to, to be here, to have four top 25 teams so down from southern Utah up to Utah State and BYU and Utah in between. I mean, every weekend you'll have a great top 25 matchup that you could go and watch or enjoy gymnastics. That's why the Gymternet is so excited about watching gymnastics on BYU TV. That's right. <laughs> Because there's so many other options to watch. Um, what, what's the first uh, meet like as you go out there and you say, all right, are, are you asking, like, what do we have? Or is it like, no, let's compete, and then we'll go from there? Yeah, so, you know, everything is a challenge. Um, I was talking to you at the break. You know, you have Thanksgiving, and I'm a, I'm a coach that believes in letting your kids go home to be with their families. Um, they're still kids, and they still need to have that time with them. Uh, then you got finals and then you got Christmas. And so those are three tough weeks to kind of navigate and try to prepare a team to compete like the first week of January. So they came back. We were back in the gym two a days, January 27th. Um, even just traveling to and from work was difficult and the challenges of flights being canceled and weather delays. We did a, our own scrimmage in our gym on Saturday. The kids were amazing. Um, after, you know, up until that point, I was like, are we really going to be ready? And then coming home Saturday night, I'm like, yeah, we're ready. And then Monday morning comes around, and we have a couple come out with the flu, a couple others that test positive through surveillance testing. Now they're in COVID safety protocols. And now we're a little bit more of like, well, we were going to run you exhibition. We were going to have you just go and warm up and be there as a backup. But now you're a true freshman. Let's go. Mm. Next man up mentality. So... So for me, it's just more sitting back and going, let's see what we got. Let's see how these freshmen can handle the lights, the podium, the other teams going on, the, the fans. Um, let's just see. Let's see what these, these young freshmen are. They're getting a shot. You know, typically we want to ease them in. Uh, we, don't get, we don't get that option this year. So I, I circled the team up and we kind of had some kids pulled up. And the biggest thing was, you know, let's be positive. You know, I, I had a half, you know, bottle of water. Mm -hmm. so is this half full or half empty? You know, what happens? And I think that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to just focus on what's going well, what's positive, what's your best trick. Let's focus in on that. 
And I think great things will happen with that mentality. It's very easy to say, oh, this is going wrong, and we don't have this player, and these are the routines that we're putting up. And then it could go that way, too. So I got little stickers for you guys, for myself. We're going to yep. be wearing them today at podium training okay. and throughout the meet. Okay. We're putting the stickers and, on. And, you stickers. know, I woke up today, did my hair. I'm having a good hair day. So I'm like, okay, it there you go. It's a, day, it's a positive today. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. Optimism I can get on board for. That is for sure. You always, in football, are going to go 13 or I can feel it. Let's go. Guard Young is with us on BYU Sports <laughs> Nation. You talk about the young stars that you're training and that have a massive opportunity right now, and this on the heels of losing some major contributors. I mean, Abby Alder and Abby Staten were the two big seniors for you last year. They led you to a top 20 finish once again. Where do you feel like this team is if you were to put them in the national rankings right now? So, you know, those kids were amazing for us, and they've graduated, and they're doing amazing things. I'm so excited for the rest of their lives. They've just set themselves up to be so successful. And these other players that we've had over the past two, three years with, with those big seniors that just left, just been kind of sitting back and letting them kind of lead. And when they're gone, it's like, okay, you're it. You're the leaders. And so one of the things we did as a coaching staff, instead of naming like, hey, a team captain, like you're a team captain, I kind of watched what football does a little bit. And, you know, they have, you know, offensive captains and defensive captains, special team captains. And I'm like, well, we have that, you know, we have, we have beam. Yeah, four mm -hmm. different so, events. So let's have a beam captain. We have floor, let's have a floor captain. And so instead of being in charge of like the whole thing, let's have you focus in on your craft. And, and so we've named uh, four captains. We've given them a little bit of responsibility. It's your team now. Take charge. And, and as coaching staffs, it's great to be able to go to them and say, hey, what are you thinking about this lineup? And what do you, what do you think about doing this at practice today and getting their feedback? It's been kind of cool. It's a new experiment for me. So, so far, we've been really liking event captains, and we think it might pay off. We talked about the first meet. It happens to be the best of Utah, like we talked about. It's a tr tr tremendous meet, which will be on BYU TV tomorrow night. Um, what are you hoping to accomplish in this first one on display, of course, uh, to Cougar Nation on, on the channel here? Yeah, well, I, I'm looking for these young kids to come out and just don't hold anything back. You know, it's not about did you hit your routine? Did you get a certain score? I want to see were you aggressive? You know, there are things such as like bad hits. Yeah, you hit, but, you know, it didn't look too good. Sure. You know, and there are things that that's a good fall because they were going aggressive for it. You know, if you keep doing that, you're going to put it down. You're going to figure it out. So I think for me, it's not about a score or placement. It's about, you know, staying positive. That's what we're going to focus on, being aggressive. And then, then those other things will take care of themselves. So for me, with these young players, go out there, go aggressive, don't hold back, got nothing to lose. What are the goals? Obviously, you want to win another conference championship, but in terms of, like, national status, like, where, where have you placed goals for this specific team because you are so young? My, my goal every year, my goal coming here has been just consistency. You know, we were top 12 team last year, one of our highest finishes in a long time, but every year we've climbed. And so now I think we're at a pivotal point of, okay, where's our consistency at? And we don't want to fall too far down. My goal is the top 20 finish every single year, yeah. maybe top 15. And then those special years with those special players, we're cracking a top 10. We're, we're trying to make a run in the NCAA tournament. Every year we want to be in contention for a conference championship. So we're still in this MRGC, Southern Utah, Utah State, Boise State Conference for the next two years. Which and is this jump. loaded conference. It's a loaded conference, top 25 teams, every team. And then we jump over to the Big 12. Um, which is again another loaded conference, and so for me, I just we want to run at the a conference championship every single year. Let's be in the meet. Let's let's fight it out, and let's get some consistency within the program. And then we get those special years where we really jump. Who are the captains that you mentioned uh, by rotation? There we go. So on vault, we have uh, Sadie Miner, um, who's our best vaulter, and then we have Haley Patu on bars, who came back as a fifth year senior uh, on floor. We have Brittany Vakowskis. Who is amazing. a walk-on. <laughs> and, and we have Elise Rollins, who came as a walk-on, has earned, earned a scholarship this year for a balance beam. Very nice. So. Well, you mentioned the young kids, but you're, you're saying these names, and I'm like, oh, yeah, BYU's got, yeah. they got some vets. Yeah, we got them. 
You got it. Well, good luck tomorrow. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for we the best it. of Utah we meet. It. We need it. You know, as you take on some uh, elite level competition in the Beehive State. And I do want to mention, uh, we did a uh, Deep Blue podcast. It's going to come out January 15th. So some fu- it was a oh, fun wait. conversation, Garth. I learned a ton about you, so I uh, encourage people to listen to that coming up January 15th. Did he steal your silver medal again? No, he let me borrow it. <laughs> I would never steal it. I know. I was with you when he let you yeah. borrow I still can't believe you let him borrow it. Yeah, it was, it was, I went to football practice, yeah. and Micah Simon said, I said, hey, Micah, this is a silver medal from the Olympics. He goes, no, it's not. I go, yeah, it is. He goes, how'd you get that? I go, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, I know, I know people. <laughs> yeah, you know people. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Okay, coming up. Rise and shout out to New Beginnings. And after having a week off, it's time to dust off our projection prowess or double down picks for tonight. I got a lot of ground to make up. This is BYU Sports Nation. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. (laughs) With the free BYU TV app. I like it. This veterinarian is healing pets and healing hearts, one story at a time. Dr. Kwan is on a mission to give back by helping the pets of the homeless. He travels around the country to aid anyone in need. But these pets aren't just animals. They're best friends, family members, and a source of comfort to their owners. Watch to see inspiring stories of resilience, friendship, and love, all on Street Vet on BYU TV or on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Or download the pod, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. Put your happy faces on, got our stickers on, courtesy of uh, gymnastics coach Guard Young. It's going to be a great day. It was a fantastic happy face. <laughs> All right, uh, Jerem, it is a ball night, or more appropriately, as you put it, how do you say it? Ball night? Ball night! There we go. Okay. And time for our BYUSN double down predictions against Pacific. Here's how it works. Two predictions about uh, tonight's game. Each one's worth one point. If you get both, you get a bonus point for a total of three. Jeremy, you had the lead 24 to 12 over me. Dave and Jason have combined for five. Not sure why we're still keeping track of them. Yeah, they don't get it back every time. <laughs> It's just to see how much more you have. <laughs> it's, to, it's to drive that wedge into my heart a little bit deeper. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, lead us off. Uh, number one, BYU does not cover. 17 and a half, big, uh, big number. BYU is coming out of some illness with Spencer Johnson sending tonight. Still figuring it out in the post a little bit. I don't think BYU covers. I think it's close, but BYU doesn't cover. Okay. Number two, Alex Barcelo needs eight points for 1,000 at BYU. He already has 1,000 career. But uh, with Arizona, but he gets that in the first eight minutes Ooh. of the game. Okay. okay. I like that. Eight, quick, eight a and, quick start. Eight and eight. He's been a big time second half guy, so I like that. Yeah, he averages eight and a half a half. BYU, I think, will cover, Jaron. BYU wins by 18 plus. Mm. Pacific's 0 and 5 on the road, 5 and 9 overall. Coming to Provo. BYU's been sitting for a week. I think they're going to be anxious, chomping at the bit to get things going. I think or they're BYU, rusty. I think BYU wins big tonight. Hopefully not. And Gideon George, because he's the man of the hour, uh, the deep blue follow-up we watched yesterday, 
He's going to take that good mojo. He's going to combine for 15 or more points and rebounds. He averages seven points a game, six and a half rebounds. I think between the two of those, he'll have 15 or more combined points and rebounds. All right. On to the BYU resume update. In the net rankings, the Cougars down one spot today, number 30, and 26 in the Ken Palm, which is also down one. Right around the same seed line that we uh, have been seeing from Joe Lenardi, eight, nine seed, depending on which bracket you look at. Bracket matrix has, I think, BYU to eight, net, eight, eight point eight or seven whatever. or something like. Yeah, well, there, there is your resume update. Good spot to be in. Uh, Beat St. Mary's, and you could probably jump a few spots if a, they play that A game. spot, maybe. Um, you're saying in seed line? Yeah. Yeah, maybe one. Yeah. St. Mary's below BYU. Got to take care of business. I just hope the game happens. Our question it's of the day. It's happening until it isn't. I, optimism, right? It's the well, that's the reality. The glass is They don't full. start with it canceled and then say, now it's on. <laughs> it's, it's scheduled. Yeah. Our question of the day, on to football again. Do you expect the BYU offense to be as productive or maybe even better than last season? Scott Solberg on Twitter says, my guess is we will see more of the passing game. Brooks is a good body to fill in, running back from Cal, for Algier, and a compliment to Katoa's speed. Hey, Mooley is a big body for pass blocking. We'll open up more for Mason Wake and our tight ends in the passing game. Wake is a fullback as well. He's like this hybrid, right? So you could have two fullbacks in there or just have Wake at tight end, you know? Hey, Mooley is a traditional fullback. Like, it, there's Watching not a some of his blocking of highlights at Stanford are really fun. Yeah. No, for real. <laughs> He's the bulldozer. He's awesome, man. All right, Matt Anderson, 6,007 on Instagram, says, better offense. The 2021 Whoa. offense was solid and explosive at times. I expect Hall to continue to improve. Solid? They were, <laughs> they were better than solid. A Eighth in yards per play program in the country. That's best awesome. season record individually from Tyler Algier. Wow. He says, I expect Hall to continue to improve. The better offensive line, very capable weapons. I expect the 2022 offense to be explosive and solid at times. So the same thing? He's expecting the same? Because those are the same words. Just add, Yeah, explosive and solid. <laughs> BYU was very explosive. BYU was top, uh, you know, 11th and 30-plus, 7th and 40-plus plays last year. BYU was awesome at explosive plays. Fantastic. All right, our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Roberts underscore MN. I think this last year was the floor. The floor? <laughs> no, 4 and 9 was the floor. I'm sorry. Who alert. knows what the ceiling Blue is? Blue yeah. Blue like Blue Michael Jordan Blue said, the ceiling alert. is the roof. Sure. So there you go. Okay, where's the roof for BYU football? 13 and 0, Spence. <laughs> oh. A natty playing Alabama in the semis, and BYU will score a touchdown. We got a handful of rise and shout outs to get to presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Gunnar Romney. Yeah. Excited he's coming back. He's a tremendous receiver. Christopher Brooks and Houston A. Mooley, great additions to the running back room. And then uh, good luck to San Francisco taking on Loyola Chicago at Salt Lake Community College today. It's so random. Home of Jason Shepard. Um, and the start of West Coast Conference play tonight. The only game scheduled is BYU Pacific. Oh, man. There's no way they're going to play all the games. It's tough. There's well, no the time now. They're going to play them until they're not, though, right? <laughs> they're not loading up Tuesdays. <laughs> they're not loading up Tuesdays. Our thanks to today's guests, Cam Meller and Guard Young. Sorry, Dennis. Bye. We're Jeremiah I'm Spencer. Shout out to Tony Crutchfield. We'll see you tonight, 830 Eastern on Countdown to Tip Off. And then BYU Basketball taking on Pacific in the Countdown to Conference Tip Off. Go Cougs.